Thank you for having me. Uh, that's a hard act to follow. Uh, <laughs> good morning, everyone. Uh, joining me in the audience today is David Brain, former CEO of EPR Properties, Fred Ellermeyer, the Vice President of Smart Integrated Infrastructure at Black and & Veatch, and Carrie Shearer with Government Affairs at Black & Veatch. We're here today to talk to you about rebuilding I-70 using a public-private partnership and smart pavement. This allows us to reconstruct the interstate without any increase in public funding, no taxes, and no tolls. Smart pavement is an interlocking prefabricated pavement system that has embedded sensor networks providing intelligent transit services on a subscription basis. You can think about this like a cellular service or an ISP. Uh, the subscription services are navigation support to enable driverless vehicles and wireless electric vehicle charging, primarily oriented to commercial fleet operators, but also available to the general public. We would also be uh, collecting and analyzing data on traffic, on pavement conditions and environmental conditions for the benefit of the private members and the DOT. The project is estimated to be about uh, approximately 3.6 billion, which is in line with MoDOT's own estimates for reconstruction. The public contribution is, uh, the public contribution is about 380 million, um, which is only about 10% of the project. The Contribution is made up out of existing funds. The P3 will take over uh, the, the operation of the interstate. Um, MoDOT will contribute the existing operating budget between 2016 and 2019 as the majority of their contribution and the remainder will be made out of the scrap value of the existing materials on the interstate. And I believe I, yeah, skipped a slide. This reduces the public funding obligation by 90%. The P3 is structured as a design, build, finance, operate, maintain, which minimizes MoDOT's risk on the project. Revenue is derived from a combination of availability payment and demand risk. Uh, the availability covers the debt and the demand risk provides the return on investment for private members. The uh, demand risk is made up of basic free access. Anybody that wants to use the interstate uh, but does not want to subscribe just uses it as they would with no fees, no tolls, no anything extra. And then subscribers access the premium uh, ITS services. This also gives us, gives us the ability to share profits with MoDOT. Construction expenditures are uh, as typical as they can be for an atypical project like this. You'll notice that ITS makes up about a quarter of the project. Land acquisition is taken directly from MoDOT's own estimates. Um, the two other items to note are intermodal facilities and operational facilities to support the ITS services. This slide shows the estimated revenue and profit sharing with the DOT. The first year of operation, we expect to generate approximately 300 million in revenue, which would not result in any profit sharing year one. However, within 10 years of service, we would generate more than a billion dollars in revenue, fully voluntary by subscription, which enables us to share more than 450 million with the DOT. Considering the impact on public funds, we would reduce the expense of operation by about six million in the first year and uh, actually increase MoDOT's budget by about 425 million within 10 years of service. As you, as you know, that more than doubles MoDOT's uh, operating capital versus the 325 plan without any additional public expenditures. We do need your help in order to move this forward. We need to do a pilot project, which we estimate at being approximately four million to do a one mile demo, and that would take us about 12 to 18 months to complete while we advance the P3 uh, item through other channels. 
This would give us the ability to prove the technology works, prove the system works, demonstrate it to all of the stakeholders, and to validate and confirm our expense models for the project. It would also be a test bed for in-vehicle technologies. Um, as you might imagine, it's difficult to prove that those work if you don't have a smart pavement to pair them to. We would be using the site to gain political support by demonstrating it to the commission, to the Department of Transportation, to legislators and various other state officials. We would be using it for uh, public demonstrations of the technology to build public support and also to demonstrate the system to the commercial subscribers so that we can get the uh, pre-subscriptions that ensure profitability in the first year of operation. We request humbly that the commission recommends to MoDOT that they move forward with the pilot so that we can figure out the uh, project funding, the project schedule, and the project location. Beyond DOT support, we also need uh, support from the governor's office and from the legislature. As you can imagine, there are a number of bills and other measures that need to be resolved in order to make this large-scale P3 happen. Um, we humbly request that you recommend, that the commission recommends to the governor's office to consider this as an alternative to a tollway, and uh, we humbly request that the commission recommends the legislature to begin analyzing this plan to determine what bills and other measures need to be resolved in order to take this forward with the state. We believe that rebuilding I-70 using a public-private partnership and smart pavement makes perfect sense for everyone involved. It provides the state the benefit of a brand new interstate that is prepared for the next generation in vehicle technologies. Um, the, the use of subscriptions instead of taxes or tolls resolve obstacles to public and political support. If someone doesn't want, can't afford, or isn't compatible with the subscription services, they just use the interstate as they do now. The, this enables us to leverage private financing uh, without additional public funding um, and without the public resistance that we get from the idea of a tollway which in turn allows the state to turn an unfunded liability that desperately needs attention into a revenue generating asset which within 10 years we believe will more than double MoDOT's operating revenue. In short, we think it makes perfect sense. We appreciate your time and uh, we're happy to answer any questions that you might have on the topic. color in a little bit with regard to the subscriptions, what uh, your, what I think I heard was that people would continue to drive on this road if they would, or they could have a subscription. What's the motivating factor to get a subscription? Subscribing to wireless navigation support for automated vehicles uh, would reduce the cost to a commercial operator for transiting Missouri by approximately 15% versus today's costs and approximately 40% reduction versus a tollway. On top of that, by, uh, limp, by reducing the burden of hours of service regulations, by removing the driver from the vehicle into a vehicle operations center, an existing commercial fleet operator would be, be able to more than double their shipping capacity without additional investments in trailer or other equipments other than the upgrades required to take advantage of the service. Uh, another major component of that is the wireless electric vehicle charging. Um, electric vehicles are uncommon today but are be rapidly becoming more common and with wireless electric vehicle charging, you would be able to take your Tesla or GM Volt or Nissan Leaf or what have you from Kansas City to St. Louis 
and back to Kansas City without ever having to stop to recharge. Those are the two major benefits and the two major revenue items for the project. However, as you can imagine, with any kind of digital service, we rapidly find new ways uh, to generate revenue and new ways to add value. Understanding it's all new technology and you know, cutting edge stuff. Are there other pilot projects anywhere in the country? Anybody else doing this? Are there other companies or people working on this? And what, what do you see as, I guess, maybe your competition or where other people are headed? Well, the city of Tampa just last week received a, I believe, $12 million a uh, grant from uh, US DOT in order to build a smart interstate that accommodates uh, driverless vehicles but does not actively, does not actively enable driverless vehicles. Um, the Michigan Transportation Institute uh, is working in conjunction with the US DOT's ITS Joint Program Office and RITA, the Research Innovation and Transportation Associate Administration, um, to build a, a uh, test site outside of Detroit. Caltrans has done prior projects like this and is currently considering a very similar system. Um, Texas is also considering a system and I believe the Netherlands is building a seven mile uh, advanced ITS autonomous vehicle test track. So MoDOT would be in very good company. And just one other question is, the, the information, the technology is coming from the pavement, from the road. Now, why not from a satellite? Well, one of the major issues with uh, traditional versions of autonomous vehicles, if anything can be called traditional, is that you have a lot of investment in detecting the presence of other vehicles and you have a lot of investment on in-vehicle technologies which makes the vehicle itself several hundred thousand dollars. Most people can't afford that. The safety improvements available with autonomous vehicles can nearly eliminate traffic deaths which very much matches MoDOT's agenda. Uh, by putting the equipment in the interstate, we can reduce the user cost, we can amortize the equipment across tens of thousands of users per day, uh, which makes it much, much more accessible, and by doing it this way, we can generate revenue to actually support the reconstruction of our necessary infrastructure. Yeah, absolutely. We look at it as very similar to the navigation systems everybody had on their uh, window 10 years ago, and then it worked its way into your dash. Um, there's currently a company from Kansas called Cruise that sells upgrade systems for Audis uh, that allows extremely advanced cruise control. Um, Cadillac is uh, putting out 2016 model year vehicles that support what's called vehicle to vehicle and vehicle to infrastructure which is essentially the same kind of thing we're looking to provide. The way that we see it is we're going to have a five-year window to work with OEMs so that new vehicles can have the technology integrated at the factory and also to work with aftermarket facilities so that you would be able to bring in a not necessarily new vehicle and get it upgraded for a thousand to two thousand dollars is our target for the in-vehicle systems. Good. I know that you brought some guests with you, so I might know. Uh, <laughs> and this will go to my question. I know David Franks is very involved in equity markets in his career. Of course, Black and Beach is a worldwide uh, leader in engineering solutions in a variety of fields. So tell me, what uh, discussions have you already had with those important spheres, in particular the equity market, because you're, you're talking about bringing private investment mm -hmm. to help them move forward, and also on the technology side with the, with the engineering. Tell us about those. 
We've seen a lot of interest from engineering firms and from contractors. Um, we're currently taking this to the equity markets so that we can start to uh, put together the rest of the financing component for the project. One of the major limitations that we've seen so far is that as of this point, it's an unsolicited proposal to the DOT. And we've seen that the contractors, engineering firms, and equity markets require some uh, demonstration of buy-in from the state officials in order to bring credibility and traction to the project before they can make a firm commitment. So we have a, a stable full of companies that are very eager to go ahead, but due to the conservative nature of the market are unable to commit until they see some level of interest from the state. So you see the, the, the first hurdle of getting buy-in from the, the equity markets being a, a demonstration or a vote of confidence through a DOT like ODOT. Exactly, and that's one of the reasons that we want to move the pilot forward because that would be a very big uh, signal of interest from the DOT because the entire point of the pilot is to demonstrate the tech for the full project. Uh, so if we can move that ahead, we believe that a, a significant portion of it will be privately funded, which limits the burden on the state, limits the risk to the state, and enables us to take the full P3 to the next level. You, know, you didn't mention it. I, I understand that in terms of when we talk about this embedded technology, that this would really be precast panels that would be used to construct the road. It would be kind of a plug and play type of installation. Yes, one of the major limitations to using embedded ITS of this nature with traditional construction technologies is the mantra of get in, get out, stay out, every day counts, you've got to be done quicker, quicker, quicker. Uh, by using precast, we can put all the technology in at the factory, so not only do we have a more rapid installation because of the nature of precast, we don't add any time to the project by having to do the ITS work on site. Great. Good. Any other questions? Tim, thank you. We've had a chance to meet before. We appreciate your passion. It's this new thinking, particularly from a, a young generation with new ideas, and uh, you're challenging us. I mean, you're making us think outside the box, and I want to let you know that we're going to take very seriously the things that you've talked about. At the root of that is trying to find even $4 million to, to get a test project. So all of us need to continue to, uh, to work to get the modest increase right now that Senator Leibla is seeking through a gas tax because it enables us to look. We talked about this. One of the things right. that we, we can get that passed, it allows us to look at such things as your proposal. So uh, your assistance and those with you to help us get that gas tax through, through will help us be able to entertain some things like this. So I'll tell you, we're, we are very interested in cultivating new ideas and new leaders in technology. So congratulations to you. Thank you for bringing your, uh, your cohorts and advisors by. It's a, a great show that you have support from people that are well respected. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time this morning.